when we continually stick with this mundane, regular, you know, clockwork type um, life, we, we miss out on the, that memorable moment, right? I mean, rarely does the mundane create something memorable, something different that is like, oh, I can, I can tell that story. Many times I want people to live their life, and I share that, like live your life like you want to tell that story. Sure. Um, you may not be a storyteller, but you, you, you should live your life in which that there's parts of it that are, hey, I want to share this with somebody. And then I would challenge somebody too, share it. Well, that was Ben Tate just talking about how the mundane things in our life are okay, but they rarely have the power to create great life experiences. Hey everybody, Jared Sebesti, your co-host of Retire Repurpose. On behalf of Ben Tejas and myself, thank you so much for joining us here today. Well, the new year is upon us, and instead of doing a typical podcast about goal setting or the importance of New Year's resolutions, we wanted to talk about openness, being open to new experiences and new things in life. So this is the best year of your life and your retirement. As the old saying goes, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So for you to wake up in a year and say, that was an incredible year, you must be open to new opportunities each and every day starting today. In this podcast, Ben Tejas shares a recent experience involving a hitchhiker and how the lessons from that experience and that yes can help you have a great and fulfilling year. Enjoy this episode. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the show. So glad that you're joining us here on Retire Repurpose. If you're new to the show, perhaps uh, you're going to hear maybe a little different language. We're going to talk about life and retirement, not just retirement. Lots of retirement podcasts strictly about the numbers. And uh, we'll talk about that on occasion here on the show. But really, this is how your life intersects with retirement. And more so, how do you thrive in retirement? How do you live with purpose? How do you have a life that's God honoring? How do you have a life that doesn't just kind of fizzle out? How do you have a life that actually crescendos during retirement. If that's what you're into, if that resonates with you, uh, you have certainly come to the right place and we're so glad that you're joining us here today. If you've missed the past couple of shows, we've talked a lot about mindset uh, over the last oh five or six weeks. We talked about the book, The Gap and the Gain by Dr. Benjamin Hardy. We talked about uh, the power of your voice, the power of your words. We talked about the power of creation and how uh, so many times society will tell you that creation is now done once you retire. We don't believe that. And last week, we talked about identifying scarcity mindsets when handling money. We, we posed three statements or three topics of conversation, three talking points, and how you answer those questions, that will kind of maybe give you some red flags as to uh, whether there's a little bit of scarcity in how you look at your life, how you look at your retirement, and how you look at your money. Ben Tay just joins me on the show now. Ben, this was an interesting show because you know we're in the the retirement planning business. Our job is to help people, you know, build wealth, but there's also kind of a fine line in there, once you say, when it comes to saving money versus hoarding and how kind of, you know, perhaps mindset can kind of be perhaps maybe a damaging part of this equation. Yeah, Jared, I think uh, something that I see continually have seen over my career is where individuals get kind of caught up in this um, this dollar sign on their on their bank statement, right? And they and they get used to it always going up and building wealth, and that's what they're used to. And um, I I think one of the key things that I want to have people hear is that it's okay to see that actually go down, to actually live on the principle, mm. um, to actually use some of part of a sound financial plan many times does include, yes, some wealth transfer, you know, mm. giving before you die to either charities or kids, but also um, it, it's okay to, you know, if you saved that money, mm -hmm. to spend some of that money. Now, I'm not just talking about you save the money, now it's okay to, to spend the interest that you're earning on that. I'm right. talking about actually using and spending, whether that be on yourself and have the have the grace to feel like, okay, yes, I can splurge. That was from the last week's show. But also I have to feel like, yep, I saved the money. It's okay for me not just to spend the in income or interest on it, but also yep. to use some of the principal on whether it be giving to charity, kids, or my lifestyle. You, that's like blasphemy 101 when it comes to financial planning in a lot of ways where you're actually not only spending the interest, but also uh, spending the principal. In the in the financial world, there's a fancy word for that. It's called deaccumulation. And uh, I, again, you are really like you know tippy-toeing a fine line because 
you know, people have spent so much of their life, decades perhaps, growing, you know, their nest egg. And for them to not only not have an income, but now watch their nesting number goes down, um, that's a tough psychological battle in, in many ways. Yeah, I don't want them, I want them not only to flip that switch in their mind that's okay, mm-hmm. but to actually plan that, yeah. to plan into uh, what they're doing a steady de accumulation of their wealth. Mm-hmm. Because um, I've, never, um, I, I've never seen anybody get to the end of the life their life and say, you know, man, I, I wish I had spent a little bit less. I had experienced less. I wish I had, um, you know, had, had a more in my bank account on yep. that day. It's, it's always, man, could have I done a little bit more? Could have I, um, you know, experienced more in life? Could have I given more to this charity, my kids, whatever it is. So I think it's just really important to, to realize that it's, it's a mindset shift. Mm-hmm. Um, and the plan should really back up, uh, that idea of you've saved it. Now it's okay for you to spend some yeah, of that. Yeah, absolutely. If you missed last week's show, go back to your favorite podcasting platform, find us, subscribe while you're there, check back in. Um, very important shows as we talk about your money and your mindset. Well, on today's show, Ben, we're going to talk about the new year. 2024 is upon us. And so we want to give people, uh, we're not going to do kind of the typical, like, okay, here's some ways that you can set some goals. And it's kind of the, you know, it's kind of the re-rack show that you see, that you hear from so many different podcasting platforms. And and we thought about going down that road, but uh, we want to give people three specific things to be open to when it comes to 2024. And this applies to everybody, but more specifically uh, to retirement. To get today's show started, Ben, you've got a really interesting story that you shared with our entire team last week, right? Yeah, I think the the name of the show should be like, hey, pick up a hitchhiker. Because I, I think sometimes um, we need to do that. And I, I mean, it may not mean like literally like I did, but I mean figuratively many times. But uh, yeah, I shared a story uh, last week where I was on the way to work and um, it was kind of a foggy day, um, and I was driving, um, and this is so abnormal, Jared, to actually see a hitchhiker um, on my way to work. My commute's about 20, 30 minutes, mm-hmm. um, but Pretty it's, rural. It, it's all rural. Yep. You know, there's just not many people around. I'm driving, and there's a hitchhiker. So what do I do? You pick him up. <laughs> I, I pull over, and I, and I stop, and I, you know, pull. He, he walks in my car, he steps in, and he's like, He's like, hey, this is where I'm going, and and just for context, it's it's probably um, so rural that the towns that he he was mentioning were probably 30 to 50 minutes away, hmm. um, and, and somewhat on the direction I'm going. But I said, you know, I'm gonna take you, and I said, and we got on driving, and um, found out that this gentleman had been down at the local casino, and he was down there gambling. And some parts of his story didn't add up and I didn't press too hard, but I'm just saying, uh, he had had a tough day. Uh, he had run into a, a deer and his car was, uh, was totaled. He said, didn't drive, but then, um, he had left his phone, he had left his wallet in his car. And I, I you know, I just kind of went with it mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, some of this makes me nervous, but, um, God just, just help, help this to turn out the way that, uh, you put this man in my life. So let's just do this. And, uh, as we got going, um, he, he didn't ask me for advice, but you know, in, in this business, I'm, I'm kind of a, um, somebody who likes to give advice and, and I felt prompting to not, not only share some of my faith story, but also my financial journey. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that stuck out to me was, um, you know, he had been down, uh, to the casino largely because he was laid off. And, and I said, well, you're laid off. Well, he's, yeah, I'm on unemployment and I just get really bored. And he talked about how he felt as if, yeah, you know, there's not a lot to do. And he's like, yeah, I thought I'd come down here and spend a few hundred, which I know meant a few thousand probably dollars mm. gambling. And he didn't win. Um, but what stuck out to me on this on this drive, which, by the way, ended up driving about 30, 40 minutes with this guy. You were guy. very late to work. Yeah, I was day. late to work. <laughs> uh, but what stuck out to me, Jared, is just how um, the, the lack of direction or motivation or um, really work in his day caused him to make bad decisions. Mm. It caused him to, um, when, when he kind of lost that um, reason to get up in the morning and go do something and create and, and be active and, and add value, yeah. he made some bad decisions. Mm. And it, it got into me um, giving him a, a, a short um, lesson on that, kind of talking through, hey, um, 
you know, could you, can, can you tie this all together? And he agreed, yeah, maybe, maybe gambling away some of his um, unemployment dollars was, was not the best decision. Mm-hmm. Um, but towards the end of that conversation, Jared, as I was dropping him off, um, we got in deeper into that, that what is work and, and how important it is to add value in society conversation, which I love. Mm-hmm. And he said something like, you know, my dad's struggling with that. I'm like, well, tell me about your dad. He just retired he, a little earlier than, than he probably should have, the guy said. And I said, well, how old is he? He was late 50s, and he had a pension, and he had um, he'd been part of the union for years and, and more, um, you know, active work. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, he's just really struggling. He, he's buying, he bought a new car. He thought that would make him happy. And now he's he's just kind of busy, um, you know, just, you know. He, he, trying to keep busy. Trying, trying to stay busy. He's just yeah. trying to spend time, but he doesn't really have direction. He doesn't have clear purpose. Mm-hmm. He said that word. Yeah, interesting. A, a very interesting, <laughs> you know, knowing that I wrote a book on on having purpose in retirement. And, and I said to him, you know, I, I'd like to get your, your dad's information because I'd love to send him a copy of my book because I talk about that and how early retirement and um, misplanning the, the life side of retirement can cause so many problems. Mm-hmm. I said, can I get his name? And I won't share his last name, but his name was Jim. Mm-hmm. And for those of you that are listening that have read my book, and if you haven't, please let us know. We'd love to get you a copy. Mm-hmm. But the guy that I wrote about in my book, which, which really showcases a, an individual that I helped retire way too young um, because he was, um, you know, in his late 50s. And I thought I was giving him the greatest gift of early retirement. Turns out it was was actually very detrimental to his life. But his name was Jim. Mm -hmm. And his his fictitious name in the book was Jim anyway. And, Jared, I I couldn't have had a more like, oh, God, this is what you were doing today Mm -hmm. with a random hitchhiker in the middle of West Central Minnesota and then tie it all back together to as he's getting out of my truck and I'm sending a, a copy of my book to his dad who happens to have the same name and have the same struggle with the guy that I wrote mm-hmm. about in my book. Yep. It was one of those situa- one of those it was one of those moments where you're like, okay, God, I have to continue mm-hmm. to say yes. I have to continue to be open to your leading in my life. And that's why I'm saying today's show should be called pick up the hitchhiker. <laughs> I think that's a that's a phenomenal story and I think that that's a really uh, uh, great working title. But yeah, you came in to work that day and we had to kind of just do a little standing meeting so you could share that uh, that story. I think that is really interesting. You know, there's a there's a phrase that we've used. There's a book that's been written called God Winks and uh, as soon as you shared the story, that was the the phrase that uh, came to my mind. I actually said it um, in our team meeting that like it's really interesting if you're if you're open to God's leading um, these little things, uh, I shouldn't say little, but many times little and even big things um, happen um, throughout your day and throughout your life. And it makes life really, really exciting. So one of the points we wanted to cover here today was just that it was to be open to new experiences. Again, going back to some of uh, the, the things that we've mentioned over the course of years on this show, that's a lot of times countercultural to the norm of what retirement should be. How can people have those experience been in retirement if it's really if they're just kind of following the template what is something they can do um, to be open to some of these new things well Jerry, i think there's something really powerful for all of us to routine i, I love routine and i love um, staying in some routine whether it be for my health uh, that means for you know my personal development routine and um, kind of how we we go about our day and engineer our days right with certain things is important but there's also something very valuable about doing things that are just different to your normal routine, yeah. right? You know, we know from some research when we were doing the book repurpose that in Japan, it's not uncommon if you were to go to a park, you'd see people walking backwards. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, sometimes you, you do something just different mm-hmm. because it gets your brain thinking differently. Yeah. Um, I, I think when we just stick to only routines and we never jump out of that routine, you know, we miss out on uh, learning, right? We, we miss out on these experiences yep. that are that could be an amazing change in our life. I think there's something to shocking the system. I mean, it's almost kind of like the, the latest fad right now is uh, cold plunging. And if you've ever cold plunged, it's shocking to the system. Um, it gets you outside your comfort zone. We've talked about pattern disrupts. I think that that's all one of them too. One thing I've, I've learned as I've just kind of learned and gotten a little bit more wisdom in my uh, old age of my mid-40s like you, Ben. Um, Life, it's weird because 
the comfortable side of life, the the mundane or the you know kind of the 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 the, the usual, the routine is very comfortable, but there is some level of discomfort in the comfort. You know what I'm saying? The opposite is true. When we allow ourselves to step outside of our kind of our comfort zone, so to speak, um, what happens is is that it gives us the ability to experience new things. And so there's kind of this dichotomy between just staying in your lane, never saying yes to new things, but yet what you're doing is it feels it feels good and safe in the near term, but when you start understanding some of the things that you're missing out on, I feel like that is almost more painful lots of times than actually going out and maybe saying yes. You see any any truth to that? Yeah, there's truth to that. I, I think so many times, Jared, that um, when when we continually stick with this mundane, regular, you know, clockwork type mm-hmm. um, life. We, we miss out on the, that memorable moment, mm-hmm. right? I mean, rarely does the mundane create something memorable, mm-hmm. something different that is like, oh, I can, I can tell that story. Many times I want people to live their life, and I share that, like live your life like you want to tell that story. Sure. Um, you may not be a storyteller, but you, you, you should live your life in which that there's parts of it that are, hey, I want to share this with somebody, mm-hmm. and then I would challenge somebody too, share it. Right. Don't just like like I did that morning. I came in. I mean, it totally made a difference on my day, you know, pick up a hitchhiker. But now I'll randomly, you know, hey, we'll be talking to something. And what's something you did different lately? Yeah. Well, I picked up a hitchhiker. <laughs> haven't done that in a while. And again, yeah. that may hopefully is not your story. I'm not recommending that to, to our listeners. But I do think that when you don't live a life that's worth telling that story, mm-hmm. um, you know, you're missing out. Mm-hmm. And, and guess what? The people around you are missing yeah. out, too. Yeah, I, I remember the very first time it was in high school, Ben. Uh, we went to high school about the same time, but it was, we took a senior trip, my senior year of high school and we went to Valley fair and it was in 1997, same year you graduated Ben and they had just put up the wild thing. Remember that? And it's still there. There's a big roller coaster that's notorious for the, uh, um, for the amusement park in the twin cities, of Minnesota. It's still there. It's still a great coaster. I remember pulling into that parking lot and everybody on the bus was like, we're going to go on that right away. And I'm like, there ain't no way in, you know, where, where I'm going to go on that. And I found myself within the first five minutes we were there, we were in line. And even at 18 years old and being, you know, very naive and immature in a lot of ways, I knew if I didn't say yes, I knew I would regret it. I knew I'd go home that day on the bus and be like, God darn it, I wish I had said yes. I think there's a lot of power in saying no. I think there's also a lot of power in saying yes. And I think that that is, uh, that's, a, that's a main point that we have to uh, talk about. The next thing we want to talk about is just that. It's stepping outside of your comfort zone. Uh, if you say yes, it's kind of interesting. If you say yes, you probably will be stepping out of your comfort zone. You know, we talk about like having a great year, Ben. What do people need to do if they want to be in this spot next year and say they had a, just a, an, an insanely good year? What do they have to do? We'll make it different than this year, Jared. I think um, being, uh, if you're just in your comfort zone all the time mm-hmm. and, and you're doing what comes natural, what, what you're used to, mm-hmm. next year may look a lot like this year. Okay, and uh, not that this was a bad year, it was a good year for a lot of people, but I think um, being able to make next year better Mm -hmm. than this year means you're going to have to do some things differently, which might mean stepping outside your comfort zone, which might mean Mm -hmm. picking up the (laughs) theoretical, you know, the hypothetical uh, hitchhiker. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's interesting to uh, go through the mental exercise, and I've done this recently with my kids. If you want to wake up in a year and you want to say, you know what, like I want, I want to have had a spectacular year, go through the mental exercise. What, what had, what had to have happened? You know what I'm saying? What had to have happened in a year for me to wake up in a year to say that? Is it a trip? Is it an experience? Is it like doing the thing that you've been wanting to do? Perhaps it's been on your heart to say, you know what, I've always wanted to take a family. I always want to take my kids uh, and experience this location that was near and dear to me. I've always talked about like taking my, you know, my my adult children and their children to here. We've always talked about renting out a cabin, which we've talked about. Um, you know, maybe that's different. You know, this next year instead of Christmas presents, what if what if we purchased a family vacation and we all got together for a three day weekend or did it next summer or something like that? What are the things that are on your list that would make you say that was an incredible year? 
because that's really the mind space you have to be in. Because these things just don't, you know this, Ben. If, if they're not planned out, things like this just don't happen. You end up going to the store today because it just happened. But memorable trips like that, they just don't happen unless they're, they're planned out and, and, and intentionally thought out and planned. Yeah, so we're wrapping up 2023. Yep. Make the list. I mean, I, I you know, I've never liked to hear a bucket list, you know, that mentality with people, I got this on my bucket list, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then it always stays there, right? Make that list of things. If you're a retiree today and you're like, man, I'm in my, you know, late 50s, uh, 60s, whatever that is, I have to tell you right now, I have dealt with so many and met with so many retirees that oftentimes say, I wish I had known how I was going to feel yeah. and how what I would be wanting to do in my 80s because when I was in my 60s, there was a lot of things I wish I'd done. Yeah. So it starts today. It mm-hmm. starts right now making that list of these are the things that I've always wanted to accomplish. These are the things that I've always wanted to do. Um, this might be a little outside my comfort zone, but make that list of those things mm-hmm. now because like you said, it won't just happen. Mm-hmm. You will get, you will have another year very similar to 20 23 in 24 if you um, just kind of do stuff sure. the same. Let's talk about this for a second since we've got the time. Um, we've said on this show, like a year is a long time. Like a lot can change. My mentality can change. You know, my direction, my goals may change. It's easier to break those down in, in the in the easier chunks quarterly or even monthly. I know we're kind of big on this, you know, me and you personally, but like there should always, every quarter, you should have something to look forward to. Right. Like there should there should be something on the calendar that's like getting you excited. And when you don't have that life turns mundane really, really fast. Give people maybe an easy uh, an easy mental exercise to walk people through to kind of just get their quarter, at least Q1 started into this next year. Yeah, Jared, one of my favorite quotes, Dr. David Jeremiah says, I want to live so that I look back without regret. I look at the present without envy and look at the future without fear. I think a big part of trying to, you know, being able to look back without regret is being able to set some specific measurable goals, short term and long term, Mm -hmm. because otherwise time will just tick by and you will miss the opportunity. Maybe that's something with your family. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's this experience that you need to take your kids, grandkids, whatever on this experience. You've always dreamed of taking them on Alaskan cruise. Mm -hmm. Um, You've always thought that would be something you wanted to do. Well, I can tell you, you will someday look back with regret if you do not at Mm -hmm. least bring yourself to the spot says, is this possible today? Maybe it's something in your health this year. Maybe Mm -hmm. you've got to address because you know that if I don't, it'll, it'll, it'll change. You know, can I, many times with our health, we, we don't really make the change until it impacts, Mm -hmm. you know, am I able to hold my grandchild? Am I able to experience things, walk around and see the world? That's when we start to need those changes. Uh, There's so many things. I think it starts with looking forward a little bit saying, okay, my goal is to accomplish this, have that thing to look forward to, uh, and then make the the incremental steps to get you there. I think that's I think that's a great point. At the end of next year, or at the end of 2024, or the end of the quarter, I want to feel like this. I want to accomplish this. Uh, you almost have to kind of go there and say, hey, what do I have to do today? What are some little things I can do? Again, the Alaskan trip, maybe it starts with researching it. Maybe it starts with walking, going back to your physical health. Maybe maybe it starts with like, you know what? Every other weekend, I'm going to spend some intentional time with each of my adult children or, or grandchildren. But it always starts in those little incremental steps, but you have to go there uh, in your head into the future. Man, we got a couple of minutes left here. What's kind of the last thing that people need to do to really be open to uh, for this next year? We got to be open to God's leading in His direction. Um, and when I got up the other morning, um, I, and I tried to do this more, I'm, I'm, I know stretch perfect at this, but I try to say, God, what do you have for me today? Whose life can I impact and what can I change? Now, if I'm making that a prayer, if I'm making that part of my daily uh, process, I will change the way I go about my day. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what happened in this example. Where, okay. Clearly, had I been thinking of a space of, hey, it's all about me and I got to get to work because I got these tasks I got to accomplish, mm-hmm. I would not have picked up this guy. I would not have picked up a hitchhiker and then learned so much about him and myself. Okay, so I think if we're not open to what God's trying to show us, sometimes it's a hitchhiker, sometimes it's a friend that just says something, sometimes it's an opportunity to just change 
um, somebody's life. And, and you have to be asking him for that leading and direction. Securities offered through Avantax Investment Services, member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Avantax Advisory Services. Insurance services offered through an Avantax-affiliated insurance agency.